Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm KRX, and we're continuing on with this beginner tutorial for Europa Universalis 4. This is with all DLCs as of 2021 with the Leviathan patch 1.31. I think right now we're actually playing on 1.313, so it's actually been updated post-release a few times. And um, there's a ton of stuff to consider, tons of stuff to think about, just because we have all the DLCs active. This is definitely not... And we're playing as Brandenburg, which honestly is not exactly the most beginner of, of beginner nations, right? But this is not Portugal. This is not the Ottomans. This is not Castile. This is not Muscovy. There's a, there's a lot more subtlety uh, to, to something like Brandenburg. There's a lot more to it, uh, analyze uh, diplomatically in our environment. There's quite, quite honestly, there's more threats, right? We have a very healthy looking Denmark up here. We have a very healthy looking Poland. We have a healthy looking Bohemia and Austria. And of course we saw France and England and everybody else around us. We have a mission right now to get England to be happy with us, so we're working on that. We're getting a lot of institutional spread in Berlin, a huge amount. I don't know why we're getting so much, but we're getting just massive amounts because we have a cardinal, apparently. Um, so having a cardinal um, is, is giving us a lot of spread from the Pope. So the Pope sharing with us and the papacy and all the, all the secrets and everything of that. So hopefully when that gets full, right, the idea is that when this bar fills up completely we will be able to go into our technology tab and get rid of this 11% technology penalty. And I'll show you guys how that works as we as we get there. Um, we have diplomats and they really cannot afford to be lazy. We need some diplomats doing covert actions. I'm gonna look and see this claim here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clip on Brunswick. I'm remembering intuitively that we have a claim on it. Here's the symbol, cores and claims. Brandenburg has a claim on this province in Brunswick. And I just wanted to check, when does this expire? 20 years, March? 1481 so this is 20 years and you can see as we're playing the game a little bit more we're getting a little bit more familiar with the button presses we're kind of going back on on what we've learned and what you know our instincts and stuff a little bit and i'm also going to check on the truce that we have with them which is 73 so the the claim is going to hold this claim will this this cause for war will stick around so that's not going anywhere hypothetically let's just say like what, what if we attacked on what if we attack these guys well we'd have a truce that's bad in addition to that, it looks like they have quite an alliance network because of the trade link. They're inside a trade link. Trade links are basically like when you have an alliance, like like when you have an alliance with a country, right? It takes up a diplomatic repu reputation slot. A trade league is like an entire like huge network of alliances that only counts as one diplomatic relation. The trade-off is you have to pay the there's there's like a you know. I think there's an economic cost to be a part of that trade league that benefits the leader of the trade league. In this case, Lubeck would be the leader of the trade league. So, you know, I actually want Wolgast to be kind of happy with us. Wolgast is someone that we will need to attack and conquer. Maybe it'd be good to go for something like Bismarck. The thing that I'm thinking, though, is that we will get free claims on Pomerania. We get free claims on Pomerania if we can take this from Poland, but Poland's our ally right now, and they have a personal union over Lithuania. So we click on Poland. They're looking healthy. They're looking thick. This is all kind of Poland's, the total reach of Poland's direct power and, and kingdom, right? And so Poland plus Lithuania, plus Moldova, plus Mazovia. What we really need is we need Muscovy to come down and, and try to take a bite out of Lithuania and create tension there, which would allow us to sneak in and maybe get this province from Poland. That's kind of what we're hoping for, although that will take some time. In the meantime, we've been working on a show of strength, which is um, in order to take, we need 13 provinces in northern Germany. And that'll give us free claims on a number of these areas here. And I think some areas over here too. So we need two more for that. These guys don't like us. We could try to get a claim on them. They don't really seem to have much of an alliance network either. Same wool guest. Oh, this is all part of Mecklenburg. Okay. Yeah. I think we might need to actually attack into Wolgast. Yeah. Oldenburg. Where's Oldenburg? Here they are. They're relatively weak. So, oh, Wolgast looks like a great target. Now, we're going to get more claims on Wolgast in the Pomeranian area as well. But I think I think that's actually going to be a fantastic target. We don't have a truce with them. So, let's make sure we're getting a covert, uh, getting a spy network against Wolgast. Rather than buttering them up, we're just going to go to war with them. Verdon doesn't like us, so we should probably make them happy. 
I wouldn't mind actually going back and making the Pope happy. Checking on Austria's opinion of us. Austria likes us. That's good. Um, I wouldn't mind trying to make the Palatinate a little bit friendlier. In fact, we already have a royal marriage with the Palatinate. We should we should secure that. We should we should make that a uh, we should make that alliance. Let's let's. Oh, we can't because we've been old. We can't do this for six five more years. I keep I keep forgetting about this. Back to England, you go. We were forced to annul our alliances with the Palatinate, and we can't get an alliance with them for five years. I really, really, really want to build more troops, but our economy is just in tatters, which is so weird to me. We just can't get the economy going. We've humiliated a rival. That was one of our age bonuses. Getting a large city, getting a Berlin up to 30 development is also one of our goals, potentially. So that could be something we could work on. So we're at 21 now. We could just try to push this up to 30. That would also help accelerate this a little bit. We can make new states, right? We can make new states into this area. This looks like a decent state. Northern Germany, why not? High development Northern Germany lands here. Got to make that those into full cores in order for the autonomy here to come down from this 50% now. Next month, it should be a lot lower than that. And then it'll slowly decay down to, uh, to, to zero, but there you go, 36, and then it'll start coming down. So those provinces will be more useful. We're keeping an eye on these rebels. Looks like this. we got one group of rebels here that's coming up on 70%. Up on 70%. There they are, 80%. They've just hit 80%. Now, with the expansions, we have a really cool button here where we can do an autom autom autonomous rebel suppression. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to click on this. This I'm just going to have these guys just suppress rebels everywhere. And this is actually pretty cool because this will actually reduce the actual unrest in those areas by a bit. So it's actually going to cause them to uh, pop up sl more slowly. Oh no! Frederick II embarrasses the court. Blame the emperor. And we lose stability. I would like to have some stability here, to be honest. So I think we're going to bite the bullet on that. We're going to st stability up and then lose the stability. Yikes. I would like to be at positive stability. You get some really nice benefits if you're at positive stability. Missionary maintenance cost. We don't have any missionaries. Oh, we just got England to 100. We finished a, a mission for that, for the clergy because of that. So we can get another mission in three years from these guys, which is good. What else are we working on here? Defend the Empire. That's way later on. 50% army professionalism. That's way later on. Yeah, own Ansbach. Hmm. They actually have their own junior partner, which is kind of funny to see. These rebels, though, uh, these troops that are autom automatically suppressing rebels, they'll automatically go in there and take care of them. But it's important to know that while they're in this mode of suppressing rebels, they're actually creating, they're actively patrolling these areas and reducing the, uh, the unrest in these regions. So you can see that friendly troops are m minus three minus three percent so it's actually making it less likely to rebel in the first place and slowing down the rate at which they'll they'll rebel and that should be happening for most of these in fact if we could get a few more troops we could see the Megdeburg Megden Bergen Burgundian whatever this is saying <laughs> however you say Megden Berg Bergen, Megden Bergen Berg Bergen sorry guys I'm being a doofus here if we had a few more troops uh, assigned to suppress rebels in this region specifically, then this would actually go away completely. If we can get this below 0%, the rebellion will self... Uh, it'll just... It'll take care of itself. It'll defeat itself. Now, this is a grasslands province, so it doesn't really matter too much 
They don't need to be standing here in, in position to anticipate them. We'll just wait. I'm going to switch generals so that the combat general is the one that's going to be fighting the rebels and the non -con the siege general is, is doing siege things. That makes sense to me. This is a slightly more higher development province in the Mecklenburg area. So we could we could do a fabricated claim on this one first before we go for Wismar. Wismar would be nice because it does cut off Lubeck and it cuts off some of these other nations from trying to... Um, take land from Woolgast, although Woolgast is decently strong, so I don't know if they actually would do that. I'm clicking on Woolgast province, and I'm looking right down here right now. I'm looking into this garrison section, because this is a, just a really, I, I find it to be a decently quick way to see if they have any fortifications. 1,000 is their capital. This tells us that Woolgast is the capital of Woolgast. That makes sense. Um, they have a, a capital fort there. That's not a castle, right? If we click on Berlin, we see a thousand there, but that's because their fort is mothballed. It's not at being maintained. If we click on Brunswick, though, 3,000. We know they have a fort here. It says down here, fort level. No, I guess you could look at that picture there for fort level. That just says fort level one, but no castle. Like Lubeck has a has a castle. They have a castle in Lubeck. So I just was quickly, that's what I was doing right there. I just need to make sure that I'm explaining why I'm doing that and what I'm doing there. Looks like Savoy's actually in some kind of a war here against some of the... Um, so the HRE members, Ooh, wow. Okay, what is is this for the succession? No, it's just a conquest of province. Savoy is just popping off over here, to be honest. They're not part of the. This is not uh, empire dealings anymore. Um, this is all a free. Italy is free to to for their own to set their own destiny. Okay, we now have over twenty five in order to get the the claim here. Now we'll it's it's twenty actually it's twenty six it's a we get a, a reduction because we're Brandenburg usually it would be thirty in the HRE to do this but Brandenburg gets a little bit of a discount when fabricating claims so that's kind of neat and then construction cost minus fifteen percent that's kind of cool too so we can build temples a lot cheaper I like that we're coming up on our max power for military power we definitely don't want to go over that. And really, we're just kind of watching this. Oh, it's it's gone up. It's gone up. So what's the dealio here? So we've gotten Renaissance has spawned in Berlin. Renaissance in Berlin. So in order to embrace it, once we embrace it, that's how we get rid of this 13% technology penalty. Unfortunately, the embracement is grayed out because we do not have the money to embrace. We would need 200 ducats to embrace. We're at 35 at the moment. How many loans would it take to do this? Ooh, it would take three loans. It would take three loans nearly to do this. How fast is it spreading to other provinces? Because, of course, if it spreads to other provinces... Actually, I got an idea. Poland, how are you doing over here? How are you doing on the Renaissance, Poland? You have it in Krakow, but you don't have it in... Where's your capital? Warsaw, right? And it's not spreading very quickly in Warsaw. So what we could do is we could maybe sell the knowledge of the Renaissance to Poland because they're our ally. That could be kind of a way to recoup our losses here. Could be a way to recoup our losses. Let's take out the loans. Oh, wait a second. Hold the phone. There's a cheap way to get loans. We can get low interest loans from the burgers. This is going to be fantastic. Indebted to the to the burgers. We lose a little bit of trade efficiency. We're barely making any money off trade efficiency. All our money is coming in through taxation. Trade is like such a small part of our income. So 5% trade efficiency is going to be nothing. These are low interest loans. Five low interest loans. It's usually 4%, but in this case, it's only going to be 1%. Basically, this is free money. So let's get this. And as soon as we pay off the loans, it'll automatically get rid of that privilege, which is great. So we now we have money. And it's saying here you can now embrace the institution. And we're going to take this money to embrace the institution. There's a few things we need to do while the game is paused right now. We're at max military power. We need to spend that before we unpause. We're going to go over to Poland, though, and offer to share knowledge. And Poland will pay us 10% of their monthly income. Not profit, but income. 
to gain the Renaissance knowledge in their capital. Booyah. So for the next like five years or so, they're going to be paying us two ducats a month. So that'll definitely pay for those loans. So Poland's going to pay for the loans that we used to embrace the Renaissance because now we're selling them. So that's has got to spend money to make money. Let's go to our technology here and let's start clicking some of these buttons here and getting some new techs. So here we can get uh, military tech five. That's going to be uh, at a 5% discount. And that's going to give us a new kind of infantry. And then we're also going to get a new diplo tech. We're a little bit short of being able to get the administrative tech, but we should get it soon. Soon we should be able to get it. We're getting some ahead of time bonuses because of, uh, because of the uh, diplomatic technology is three years ahead of time. Now, if we were to actually get Diplo Tech 6, it would cost us a 30% tech penalty. That's bad. You don't ever want to pay these ahead of time bonuses. But if by being Tech 5, we're it's telling us that we're a little ahead of the we're about three years ahead of the curve. Once in three years, we'll be able to get the next tech without penalty and get a longer ahead of time bonus. But right now we're slightly ahead, to go more than we're just we're basically one tech ahead of the average right now. Um, is essentially what that's telling us. And we're getting a trade efficiency plus 20, 20%. We just lost 5%, but now we're getting 20%. And we get yearly corruption reduction, which is cool. That could save us money if we build up corruption through overextension or something like that. This, we got a new kind of military technology. that gives us a new superior kind of unit. And it's saying the men-at-arms is superior to the Latin medieval infantry. So we can click on this. We go to Latin medieval infantry. And we find any of these are completely viable options. They're all mostly equivalent. You have to be a very... They, they all have the same number of pips, so I'm just going to click the men at arms. It, it really does not matter which one you click there. Although what I am a little bit worried about here, though, is... Here, let's let's group these here. Let's get let's get these troops. These troops grouped up into a larger stack, so that when they suppress rebels, they should be able to completely suppress the entirety, the entirety of the uh, the rebels in, in one bit. So twenty is the uh, is the most. Um, if we like, if we walk over here, let's walk over to this province. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So there's five percent unrest here, right? You can see our troops are not ready to fight right now because they're uh, trying to they're new kinds of troops. They have to reorganize themselves because we just got a new kind of troop. Actually, why is it saying 4.77? It's probably because, maybe because their morale is not maxed. This should be 5% reduction. Oh, actually, it hasn't kicked in yet because we got to wait till the next month. There we go. Minus five. I was looking at the tolerance, 4.77 for tolerance. So friendly troops minus 5%. That's because every troop reduces it by 0 0.2. So having 20 troops there means you can do a maximum of minus five. Minus five is the maximum. Now, again, if you have the expansions, um, I'll be honest, I can't remember which expansion gave you this option, but this will let us, we can actually, what we can do with this is we can click on multiple Click on multiple states and do multiple at a time. And, and that will actually give us the 5% bonus across multiple areas. And you can see here, we have 1% in Stenton, and we have 0% now in Magdeburg. So that is going away completely. This rebellion, this 6,000 we had to fight, is now going away entirely. Entirely. This one here, interestingly enough, how do we get rid of that 0 0.1 so that we don't have to deal with these guys anymore? Well, the other thing we can do is, one, we can gain a little bit of legitimacy, which is going up slowly every year, one year, one per year. And the other thing we can do is actually separatism is going away at 0 0.5 per year. So half an unrest is going to go away. If we just wait till January next year, this will be negative and this will go away. We won't even have to fight these guys unless we get a 0.1% die roll right now. Unless we get a really fa unfavorable outcome here, we will not have to fight these these separatists at all, which is pretty cool. And then we can go and start working on the Lundbergian separatists, or we could focus on the Teutonic separatists. Which is nice. These guys, you guys can keep drilling, even though there's not much uh, really going on there. Oh, 
Oh, nice. So it looks like they are supporting this, but we need 50 Imperial Authority to do this now. 50 Imperial Authority in order to call for the first reform in the Holy Roman Empire, which will give us some really nice uh, construction cost reductions and some local development cost reductions. So if we wanted to dev up uh, Berlin, it would be cheaper once we get this. That's great. Also, this would be amazing to get an extra diplomat. So we kind of want to get to this next one. But that one's going to take a little bit more time. Like right now, we're only getting 0 0.09 per month. We have 12 free cities. Those guys are intact, which is good. There are 16 provinces in the empire under control from non-member states. That's that's one of the reasons, like Burgundy is one of the reasons why we're not getting a lot more imperial authority per month. Poland and Burgundy. Actually, what is this all about down here? What is this nonsense? This province is part of the empire. It is a subject of Savoy, whose capital is not part of the empire. Hmm. So while Geneva... Geneva would be part of the empire if they weren't a subject of Savoy. We need we need these guys to get their independence. We need those guys to kind of get their own independence is what we need. Okay, uh, Stenton, Stentner separatists are going away. That's beautiful. That's what we wanted. Lundbergian separatists are popping up, though. So as we let these guys kind of decay down and go away permanently. We're going to have to shift over here and, and focus on the Lundberg uprising. And we can see this this province right here, Lundberg itself, is a higher development. So the rebels will spawn in the higher development province. A military divided. I think we want siege ability. We've been rather aggressive so far. We don't need any fort defense or anything like that. Honestly, we're kind of to the point where we could attack uh, Wolgeist. Wolgast. Relatively much weaker army than us. We could call in some allies of our own, which is kind of intriguing. We could ask Austria for some money, which might be kind of nice. Except they don't even have money themselves. So maybe if they don't have any money... Heck, if Austria doesn't have any money... Poland, do you have money? Poland has money. Let's have Poland give us some money. Perfect. Perfect. We could pay off those loans, but honestly, I'm almost thinking about let's keep investing. More temples. More temples. Just letting this decay down a little bit. A couple more months and then we'll shift over. Once this goes away completely, it'll start rebuilding once we leave, but, but they'll have to rebuild up from the ground up. From the ground up. Oh, we're getting uh, our admin technology, which is great. And it gives us a new idea group. We can now choose a new idea group. This is really cool. We, In fact, our first idea group, which is a big way that we customize our country. So these are like branches of the technology, right? We got it. We, we got the administrative technology. Therefore, we get an idea group, which is like a philosophy for our country. It's kind of part of technology. It ends up kind of being like little tech trees, kind of, uh, in the sense that you kind of work your way up. You pick one of these and then you sort of work up and get the benefits from the different categories. But they're very thematic as to what kind of country we want to be. Do we want to be a... Di Honestly, diplomatic could be great, right? We're, we're the emperor. We could, we could lean into that and continue to be more diplomatic. We'd get another diplomat immediately. Because we could... It costs 400 every step. There's seven steps in each of these idea groups and it costs 400 monarch points. So this is like a competitor to getting technologies. This is why it's all kind of part of the technology system. Because if you're getting these, you're kind of not getting your technologies. But they actually make future technologies in these categories cheaper. So they do actually pay for themselves over time. So it's totally worth working on these, these things. Plus they just give you amazing benefits. And usually you'll have enough points to do both. You usually, once you get going, once you get rolling, you should be able to be getting enough points to get the up-to-date technologies and to also work on your idea groups. But for example, we barely, we're way behind on admin power. So we might not even be able to really afford going for an admin idea group, an administrative idea group, which I mean, there's good ones here, like economic, administrative, I mean, expansion ideas. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. We could, we could colonize the new world over here. We could get colonists. 
It's kind of cool. So there's all kinds of different things that we can do here. And, and really, I just, instead of looking at the nitty gritty, let's just think about it thematically, like trade ideas or, you know, the, let's just read the titles and see what sounds interesting. Offensive ideas. Well, we've been rather offensive so far, so this would help us continue to be offensive. And, and these are military ideas, right? Um, diplomatic ideas within the diplomatic ideas section. Uh, I think, I think honestly, quality, right? Have higher quality units. That could be fantastic as well. I'm honestly thinking offensive and diplomatic would both be fantastic choices. It's just like, what do we want? Do we want offensive or do we want diplomatic? Hmm. Man, getting some extra diplomats. I'm just now, now that I'm kind of narrowing it down based on the name and what that sort of thematically would mean to me. Now I'm just kind of like looking at a couple more diplomats, extra diplomatic relations. This would this would be an iron grip on the emperorship, which is pretty good, which is helping us economically. It's helping us militarily. We're a more powerful military nation because we're the emperor. This would help us maintain that. And I'm just like thinking, man, this could be good. This could be good. Offensive, just like, I mean, I'm seeing that offensive, we'd have better uh, generals. So we'd win battles more easily. We'd have faster sieging. Siege ability increased dramatically. We'd have more discipline. So our troops fought harder and took less damage in battle. So higher quality troops. I mean, there's all kinds of good stuff here. I'm thinking diplomatic. Let's lean into a little bit of uh, the diplomatic game. And you can see here it's going to cost 400 diplo power. We have the 400 diplo power. We're ahead of time on technology, a couple of years ahead of time here. So we're not going to be clicking this anytime soon. And the more diplomatic ideas we get, the cheaper it will be to get the diplomatic technology in the future. So we might let this ride a little bit. We might let this sort of get a little behind. And then we'll actually use uh, the, the uh, focus on this first and then swing back around and pick these up later when they actually become cheaper over time. So that could be a way to optimize that. Although what we might do is we might actually now, now we have a reason to focus our efforts. We now have a contextual reason to focus our skills and our strengths, our leaders' skills. Right now, we're about evenly distributed here between um, eight admin power per month, eight diplo power per month, and eight military power per month. But if we, we actually can focus, we can do a national focus here to pull uh, resources from admin power and military power to enhance diplo power. So it'd go seven, 10, seven. So we're not losing any points. This isn't inefficient. But we are focused on Diplo, and we can get those Diplo points faster so we can more quickly move up this track, and that'll be fantastic. We have lots of free Diplomats, and I think, honestly, we can we can have some working on outraged countries. We can have some working on neighboring countries. We could have some working on... Um, are there other covert... These guys actually want their own independence, it seems. 92%. Wow. It's like, who just doesn't like us? Most people are liking us, to be honest. But some of these people here don't really like us much. So let's just butter the... Let's just make sure we're buttering up. Some of these people that are... Uh, well, is there someone that we want to make claims on? We need to get a claim on this guy. Well, we're going to be at war with him soon. We get more claims on Brunswick so that we can maybe take more than one piece of land from them in the war. We ca Actually, we need a claim on this dude. This final province that this guy owns. There we go. That'll work. But I think at this point, to be fair, we're basically maybe just waiting for these rebels to trigger. So let's walk over here and sort of be standing by. Standing by and ready. Hey, we're blessed. A bountiful harvest. We get some extra cash. Let's go. Yeah, we do have those loans. We'll pay those off. When do those loans actually expire, though? Does it tell us that? Four year. We have four years to pay those off. Very low interest. Poland's paying us a lot of money. We're, we should be making tons of money per per month now. Poland, of course, is paying us two of this two of this money. We could check on their progress actually. The in Warsaw. Uh, yeah, they still got a long ways to go. 
They got a long ways to go. At this, at the rate though, it's gonna take about four. We got about four years of their income coming, ten percent of their income coming in here. I'm kind of tempted to call Austria into this one, to be honest. I'm thinking if we attack these guys, we could just call in Austria. And Coln, maybe because why not? I mean, what else is Coln doing? We have tons of favors with them. They got 5,000 troops. They could come help out a little bit. These rebels are going to pop up maybe even during the wartime. You know what? Yeah. And I'm a little bit torn here how we, how we play this. Wolgast, how many troops do you actually have, Wolgast? Wolgast themselves has 7,000 troops. The question is, are they hiding here? Or are they hiding over here? Where are they exactly? 7,000 troops. Here, let's grab these 2,000. Have them join with these guys. Get everybody grouped. Let's get ready for war here. Actually, I changed my mind. Because Lundberg is going to be part of the war. Oh, might take a little bit of attrition moving through there. Hopefully not. A little bit, a little bit, unless they get out of there in time. Nice. Good job. So these 10,000 will attack Lundberg. These 14,000 will go look. Oh, oh, they're fighting here. They're fighting here. Oh, this is oh, this is going to be amazing. They're sieging. We can actually pinch them between the siege that they're doing on Stenton. Who else are they in a war with? Dithmartian is also in the war, too. Dithmartian would be a good country, actually, I think, to butter up a little bit ourselves. Can we get a second claim on these guys, though? How much is this going to cost us? 31. So we need to wait a month or two to get this final claim here. Yeah, Poland. Stop, here, stop buttering up with Poland. Bring, bring. I don't know why the the, autom the automated diplomatic system thing. I, I don't love it. It does work if, but but it's working on Poland, and we, and we just don't need that right now. Let's actually get someone working on Dith Martian. This is going to be perfect. We're going to attack into those guys, and they'll be the aggressors, and we'll be the defenders in the the forest. We're basically going to tag team with Stettin, even though they're in a separate war conflict. And then we're going to wipe out these guys' as troops, carpet siege them, and then the war is going to be over. This is going to be a quick one. We don't even need to, you know, we don't even need to call in Austria. But I will call in Colton, because why not? You know, I'm almost thinking, what would it, what, you know, Brandenburg, what's the deal over here, man? If we called it Poland and Austria, we could go and just rinse our like rinse over, over uh, Burgundy, and it'd be no problem. The problem with Burgundy here is they have land that like clearly belongs to us. So how do we? Why do we not have a CB to go take that back? Why do we not have a CB to take that back? Provence, are you a member of the... Uh, you are a member. I think if Burgundy attacks into Provence, I think we will honor the call. We will defend them, so that's good. Uh, Austria, how many favors do we have with you? 40... It's just going way up. You know what? Fine, let's call Austria. And let's make sure they don't get up to their own trouble. Sometimes it's good to call in your allies... Just so they don't get up to trouble. Time to attack. This is going to be a very simple war for us. I've already set up our troops so that we can sort of sneak attack them. And we're off to the races. We're not going to call in Poland. It's warning us that we could, but we're not going to. Because Poland's going to be... Poland's going to be doing their own things. See, I want to get these workshops so that we... These workshops are a good economic boost to uh, provinces that are high development that have good trade goods. Because I think we noticed that we had some like iron and stuff being produced in our country. Uh, this will be a good place for a workshop. I think the cloth actually areas, uh, the textile and the cloths will be, will be good as well for workshops. Uh, but we need Admin Tech 5, which we're one year ahead of time on that, and we just don't have anywhere near 
you know, enough admin power. So it's going to be a while. I'm just thinking about ways to invest in our 100, our 100 ducats here. We could build a bigger army. A bigger army would help people support our um, imperial ambitions, which would be good. I don't know how many troops Oldenburg actually has. Uh, they have about 3,000. Nothing to worry about over here. Let me confirm. Yes. Uh, let me want click on the battle. Yes, they are the attacker. They're taking a minus one for attacking in the woods. Even though we, we technically attacked them, we're sandwiching them between an aggressive fort. We're sandwiching them between an aggressive fort and... Um, Now the question is, are they retreating to here? Or are they retreating to there? This will make a big difference. Oh, they are doing the full retreat. They're doing the full retreat. Okay. Sneaky, sneaky. So we're just gonna sit here with our 12,000 to make sure they don't cross. If they try to cross, they'll take a minus two naval crossing unless they have better maneuverability than us, which they actually do, which they actually do. Nice, nice. Colin's over here uh, attacking Oldenburg. That's exactly what we want them to do. In fact, I'm going to reinforce their good behavior by coming down here and see this button down here in this, in this, it says no objective. I'm going to assign this, this province as the objective, Colin's objective, Colin's objective to, uh, to go and get that province so that they don't have any, they don't move off of that. These guys are going to come up here. These two bits. Austria really doesn't have anything to do. Technically, Oldenburg has 3,000 troops somewhere, but I don't see them anywhere. I don't know where they ran off. I mean, Colin went here and attacked their country, and I think they just retreated somewhere and just hid. So that was a very clean and decisive war. All we need to do is siege out their capital. Siege out the capitals and we'll be fine. So that war is won. That war is won. One more year and we can get a new uh, military technology without penalty. So we're one year ahead of time. So next year it'll go down to a minus five and we'll get a technology discount, which is great. We still have these loans right here. We can actually see what the contribution level is of the different participants in the war, we're at 73% contribution. That means that um, if, if we take money from Wolgeist, they will, uh, oof. Rebels popped up. Rebels popped up. Oh, come on, come on, Austria, come on, come on. Help me out here. Help me out here, Austria. Good, good, good. 18,000 Austrian troops coming in to support. That's going to be destruction. Now, I don't know if they'll be allowed to retreat across provinces that they don't control. I'm a little curious how this is going to work out. Oh, they had to retreat this way. Wait, where are they retreating to? Where are they going? Hello? They're, 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 they're retreating, but I don't know where they're retreating to. Get our troops off of this province. In fact, we could just actually have, uh, we could just sit here and just loot them, right? We could just sort of um, start doing some looting. In fact, I'm going to take our cavalry in and make sure that we're looting these areas because cavalry are really good at looting. We could be building ships at our one harbor just to try to build up a little bit of a navy. We haven't really talked about ships, right? Because we barely got a navy. Actually, we'll, we'll think about this. The war is won, guys. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out during this episode. Really appreciate it. Um... Brandenburg is going to get enough provinces from this war to complete a show of strength. And that will give us a bunch of additional claims on southern, uh, northern, southern, northern Germany, if that uh, makes sense. 
But thanks everybody for being here for this episode. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys are awesome. If you have questions, please ask down below and I'll make sure to answer all your questions. Thanks everybody for being here. Have a good one, guys.